Hello everyone, welcome to the subject Agricultural Microbiology. This is our second lecture in the course. Today's topic is role of microbes in soil fertility. Soil, what is soil? It is the top layer on the earth surface and soil is made up of five components inorganic matter, organic matter, soil air, soil water and soil organisms which are mainly microorganisms. These five components where from they come? Inorganic matter comes from weathering of parent rocks, organic matter comes from decomposition of organic matter, soil air, soil water come from atmosphere and soil organisms which are there in the soil they are the most vital component of soil so we cannot imagine a soil which has no organism no microorganism so microbes are present in all types of soil they are present in all types of environment so soil is also no exception to it now what are the microbes present in soil Bacteria, fungi, algae, protozoa, nematode, virus. Now these are the microbes which are present in soil in very high number. Now are they beneficial or harmful? We have both. Some microbes are beneficial to plant. Some microbes are harmful to plants. Okay, there are many bacteria or fungi or protozoa or nematode which are harmful to plants. And at the same time, we have also bacteria and fungi which are beneficial to the plants, which protect the plants, which help the plant to grow. So we have a mix of good and bad microbes in the soil. In fact, they are always present in a balanced manner. They are always present in an interaction with each other so that no microbe can dominate in a particular soil. Now we see the greatest number of microbes in the top soil. Top soil which is about 5 to 15 centimeter of the soil surface. Okay, Then microbe density depends on physical and chemical properties of soil like organic matter how much organic matter is there in the soil what is the temperature of the soil aeration of the soil moisture level of the soil and pH of the soil so these factors determine the microbial density in the soil these microbes in the soil they help in various ways they help the plants to grow they help the plants get enough nutrients they help in nutrient recycling in the nature so these microbes are present in billions in one gram of soil we have billions of microbes in a fertile agricultural land, an estimate says that the bacteria are present in the number of 2.5 billion in a gram of soil. So actually fertile soils or agricultural soils have more microbes than non-fertile soil or a soil where agriculture is not practiced. So agriculturally active soil has more microbes there are reasons for it because when the plants grow in a soil the plant roots secrete many organic substances in the soil and those organic substances become the food for microbes present in the soil when there are plants in a soil when there are plants in a land, the plant litter or the plant after death, they are microbiologically 
decomposed and this decomposition adds nutrients to the soil and these nutrients are used by microbes and they flourish their number increase so out of all the microbial groups present in the soil the bacteria are the most abundant or most dominant so bacteria followed by actinomycetes in fact actinomycetes are also bacteria but they are filamentous bacteria earlier they were classified as a different but bacteria and actinomycetes are both prokaryotic microorganisms so actinomycetes count will also be added to the count of bacteria so bacteria is the most abundant microbe group in the soil then comes fungi then algae then protozoa then comes nematodes now growth of microbes in soil depends on many factors microbes are living they need some conditions to grow in the soil like amount of nutrients present in the soil certainly if nutrients are scarce then microbes will not be there they will die available moisture microbes need moisture to grow degree of aeration the soil should have good amount of soil air i mean oxygen because there are microbes which are aerobic they need oxygen to grow in the soil there is a need of pore space or aeration in the soil if a soil is water locked that means there is no no air no soil air so the aerobic microbes will be affected in the water locked soil anaerobic microbes will grow so degree of aeration determines which kind of microbes will be there in the soil then soil temperature certainly temperature will be an important limiting factor for microbes in the soil soil ph ph also affects the kind of microbes which grow in the soil say bacteria bacteria prefer neutral to alkaline soil whereas fungi prefer acidic soil we know the soil has different types of different ranges of ph various types of soils have different ph values so we can expect a range of microbes in a soil which has a typical ph then occurrence of flood or addition of manure as i said when there is a flood there is water logging so you will expect a different kind of microbes like anaerobic microbes which will be dominating in a flooded soil addition of manure manure is a rich source of nutrients for microbes is organic matter so when manure is added the microbial concentration microbe density or microbe population increases enormously then existence of root and extensiveness of root system when there is a plant growing in the soil its root secretes a lot of carbon compounds or organic compounds in the soil which enrich the nutritional status of the soil around the root and the microbes prefer that plant secretions or the plant leachates and the microbes grow well in the vicinity of the root then interaction between and among microbial species as i said earlier that there are many types of microbes in the soil some are beneficial some are harmful there are lots of interactions among the microbes there may be mutual relationship there may be antagonistic relationship there may be parasitic relationship among the microbes in the soil so the interaction among microbes or between microbes determine the kind of microbes which will be there in the soil which microbe will dominate a soil it depends on the presence of other types of microbes in the soil then what the microbes do in the soil the microbes decompose the organic matter they help in nutrient cycling they increase the availability of nutrients to plants they improve soil fertility 
they produce vitamins and hormones improve plant growth there are beneficial microbes in the soil which protect plants against pathogenic microbes by stimulating plant defense the microbes degrade pesticide or chemicals in the soil modern agriculture is dominated by use of synthetic chemicals like pesticides fertilizers now when these synthetic chemicals are applied in the soil the microbes present in the soil they degrade over time they degrade the synthetic compound synthetic pesticides or chemicals and there is no residue left in the soil after some time it is all because of the action of the microbes you can just think a situation where you are applying synthetic pesticides or fertilizers in a soil and there is no microbe to degrade that so over time year after year of application of those harmful chemicals synthetic chemicals they will accumulate in the soil they will go into the ground water they may also end up being in the plant system in the plant products they will be in water they will be in the plant so it will be a cause of health hazard in the long term so it is the microbes which are degrading the harmful chemicals and protecting us and protecting the soil environment then these microbes also create soil aggregates by the secretion of the microbes organic acids which are present in the soil they cause aggregation of soil particles as a result soil aeration is improved moisture holding capacity is also improved so these are some roles that the microbes play in the soil now let us see what happens to a nutrient called carbon how microbes play a role in carbon cycle carbon is the most important element in the living beings this is the basic element of organic compounds the central atom in skeleton of life and this carbon is obtained from the atmosphere the concentration of atmospheric carbon dioxide is now is above 400 ppm and the concentration is increasing every year now the main source of carbon for the organic world is this atmospheric carbon dioxide it is only the photosynthetic organisms like plant algae and some photosynthetic bacteria that can fix atmospheric carbon dioxide and build the organic world and based on this atmospheric carbon dioxide we see here a flourishing organic world on the earth but it is the action of only the photosynthetic organisms like plant algae and some photosynthetic bacteria so here also we have some microbes which are involved in fixing the atmospheric carbon dioxide then microbes decompose the organic material to return the carbon dioxide into the atmosphere so microbes play a role in cycling of carbon nutrient so let us see how the carbon cycle works so atmospheric carbon dioxide through photosynthesis the carbon dioxide is fixed in the plant but also algae and some photosynthetic bacteria then there is energy transfer to animals and these plants and animals after death they become subjected to microbial decomposition and as a result we see organic matter in the soil now how this carbon dioxide fixed in the plant or algae and then energy transfer to animals how they return how this carbon dioxide return to the atmosphere it is through respiration respiration of plant respiration of animal and also respiration of microbes so microbes here is also responsible for 
fixing carbon dioxide. Those which are autotrophs, there are autotrophic microbes. So this is in nutshell the carbon cycle. So the microbes, what do they do? So the microbes help in fixing atmospheric carbon dioxide in one hand. There are autotrophs, there are photosynthetic bacteria which fix atmospheric carbon dioxide. And the microbes also play a role in returning the carbon dioxide to the atmosphere by decomposition of organic material, decomposition of plant and animals after death. Now what are the microbes which are involved in decomposition? Now see, in terms of carbon compounds, how the microbes are involved in decomposition. Cellulose, cellulose decomposition. Cellulose is the most abundant organic material. And the decomposers are fungi and bacteria. Fungi like Trichoderma, Aspergillus, Penicillium, Fusarium, Ketomium, and bacteria like Clostridium, Streptomyces, Bacillus, Pseudomonas, Nocardia. These are involved in decomposition of cellulose. How the cellulose is decomposed? Cellulose is converted to cellobios by an enzyme called cellulase. Then cellobios is converted to glucose by an enzyme called beta-glucosidase. Then glucose is converted to carbon dioxide and water by various respiratory enzymes. I hope you know the respiratory processes, glycolysis, Krebs cycle, alright, and how the carbon dioxide is released and ATP is synthesized. So cellulose decomposition, these are the steps and the enzymes involved and the microbes involved. Hemicellulose decomposition. Hemicellulose are the polymers of simple sugars such as pentoses, hexoses and uronic acid. And this hemicellulose which is present in the cell wall or intercellular space in the plant body, plant tissue, they are decomposed by fungi like ketomium, aspergillus, penicillium, trichoderma and bacteria like bacillus, pseudomonas, cytophaga, arvinia and streptomyces. Then lignin decomposition. It is highly resistant compound to microbial degradation. It is very hard to degrade by microbes. But degradation occurs, decomposition occurs at a slow rate by some fungi and bacteria like aspergillus, polyporus, these are the fungi. Streptomyces and nocardia, these are bacteria. So they cause slow decomposition of lignin, which is a highly resistant compound in the plant body. So with this, uh, the second lecture ends here. If you have any query, you can write, you can post your query in the WhatsApp group and also you can write in the comment box of my channel. Thank you very much.